This is lecture 27 of ECE 503. So in today's lecture, what we're going to be looking at is something called multi-stage uh, multi sampling rate conversion. So we saw in the last lecture that we can do something relatively simple, um, essentially a module such as this, where we interpolate, filter, and then downsample. So l let's, let's sort of recap where we were last time. Okay. So what we saw from both the time and the frequency domain was this guy here. We have an upsampler by I. We filter. We downsample by D. And we get an output. And so this has both time and frequency domain representations. So in the time domain, what we've got is essentially we have an input signal. Okay. When we upsample it, okay, what ends up happening is we fill each one of those samples with, let's say, um, uh, with zero samples, right? One, two, three. In this case, I'm putting three, and so on, right? Then the filtering process smooths out. So let's say that's at H of n. Smooths out those samples such that it's a nice progression between each non-zero sample, right? And we get that beautiful thing. We get this beautiful envelope. That's what we, this is the, the non-zero samples we've got now. We want to fill in the zero gap such that there's this nice continuity of samples. Then we downsample by D. And the downsampling might not correspond to where we had the initial set of samples. So let's say this was the initial sample, this was the initial sample, this was the initial sample, and so on, right? But the downsampling might be this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. We're actually taking some of the original samples and then we're adding others, right? In some cases, let's say we choose this weird number. Instead of every second sample, every third, we might miss most of the original samples, right? So as a result, when we downsample, we have him. Now we have this, this middle guy here, okay? So again, we get the same, we get the same envelope as him, but we redistribute the samples across time, right? In the frequency domain, what we have is something that looks uh, like this. So let's say we do frequency domain. So in the frequency domain, we might have the original spectrum look like this, from minus pi to pi. We then do the upsampling. What happens in upsampling? it spreads out by a factor of i. And we have replicas, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Upsample, you compress. I'm sorry. There we go. Let's try it again. It compresses by a factor of i. And you also have replicas all over the place. Then you filter by h of n. You're essentially taking one replica. And then you downsample by D, which might not be equal to I. So it might be spread out differently, different width, bandwidth compared to this. Oy. Fine, keep, and then project again. So what ends up happening is, in both the time domain and the frequency domain, what we're doing is we're manipulating information, right? So in the time domain, we're just essentially, I guess the punchline is we're resampling such that the time domain data is now at different time instances, right? As for the frequency domain, what, what we're doing essentially is we're reshaping the spectral characteristic of this data. And so the upsampling 
make sure that we don't have any aliasing later on. Because what happens, suppose we upsample what we downsample larger. So you'll notice some of these systems, almost all of them, I is going to be bigger than Q. I mean, sorry, I is going to be bigger than D. Because what happens if I is not big enough, but D is? Pew! You go out of bounds, unless it's very band limited. What will end up happening is your spectrum will go out of bounds and overlap. Like, so for instance, let's say we have this bandwidth, and I is not sufficiently large enough relative to D. What ends up happening is we get this. So let's say that's minus pi and pi. And so let's say D is much larger than I. You get this, then you get this, you get this, and that's aliasing. That's bad. Okay? So that's what we saw just on this single stage rate conversion. Right? So this is, this is just a single stage. What I want to look at now is when we have a bunch of these cascaded together. Let's say we have multiple um, um, down, um, uh, down samplers or up samplers. What happens then? Let's discard. Yes. So multi-stage, as you'll see, like uh, what happens is depends on, um, like suppose you want an equivalent down sampler, right? Like you know something that. Like, really, up samples are really down samples, but you don't want the complexity associated with it. Let's say you just want some very simple, um, like, let's say, uh, up samplers by one, a factor of two or three or four, rather than something like 50. So if you put it in cascade, you can achieve the same sort of uh, sampling rate conversion without having to have one massive interpolator and one massive uh, decimator. Right? So let's, let's check it out. Good question, OK? So what ends up happening, okay? So what happens is actually, this answers your question. Uh, so there's several where we may want to break this down into several subcomponents, okay? So let's look at this. So if you have a value of i or d that's really high, relatively, I mean really high, what happens is, imagine if you're doing that. So, so, you're, uh, so what you're essentially doing, let's say you upsample by 50, right? So what ends up happening? You have 49 zeros between every sample. That's kind of insane. That's a lot. Maybe even higher. Down sampling, same thing. You're throwing away, let's say, 49 out of 50 samples every time. Is that the best way? Is that the most computationally efficient way of handling this? Probably not, right? And you know, relative is in the eye of the beholder. So what we want to do instead We want to design a filter and both downsamplers and upsamplers that can, like, you know, not be prohibitive. So that's where the multiple stage kicks in. Okay? So what we can do is if we break this down, let's say we downsample, like, let's say we do an interpolation by 5, filter, interpolation by 10, filter, in order to do the interpolation by 50 and then filter, we're doing way better than before, right? Because instead we have, like, this. Uh, you know, this really, we have something that can be relatively um, computationally um, intensive. So, for instance, let's look at this guy here, the CIC filter, right? And so, here, what we've got is we have a decimation of 8, and what we can do instead is we can break this down into three decimation by two sections just by what we've got here, right? So, we saw, like, let's look at this. So we have a decimator, d equals 8, and this cascade actually accomplishes the exact same operation, right? So what ends up happening is, let's design the filter behind this. So what happens is, let's say we have a CIC filter of order m equals 2k. We can decompose it into a way simpler structure, right? We can implement this, in this case, into a collection, like break it down into these uh, uh, subcomponents that are way simpler to implement than one massive filter that's of order 2k. Okay? 
So this is what we want to do in general, okay? So let's say with the CIC filter, we got this beautiful design here. We have a down sampler by two, okay? So, not, so nothing too insane. We're not like throwing away a gajillion amount of information all at once, but rather we, every second point we discard, 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 and then it moves to the next stage. And then I discard one out of two there. And then the next stage, I discard one out of two there. And we have a simple filter. So think about it. Just from the complexity of the filter, if I'm downsampling by two, what should be my band limiting filter? How should it look like in order to make sure I don't have aliasing? Just needs to be half the spectrum, not one eighth of it. Let, let, me, let me actually do an example. So let me jump into this. First I say okay there. So let's look at this. So referring to the CIC example. So referring to CIC example. Okay? So let's say I want to downsample by 8, decimate by 8. By 8, okay? There's several ways I can do it. So approach 1. Do it directly. Okay? So what I can do is filter, right, H of N, and then downsample by 8. So the filter, what, it, what does its characteristic need to be in order to prevent aliasing? It's got to be an eighth of the spectrum. So here's minus pi. Here's pi. Really narrow one eighth of the spectrum here, right? And so how many coefficients do I need? How complex must that filter be? How steep must the transition bandwidth be? Pass bandwidth, all that. So this can be relatively complex. And the reason why do that, we do that is, let's say we have some signal, right? We filter it because then what happens is our signal is very well contained within that eighth of a spectrum. And when you downsample by eight, now it spreads out, right? So the, but the problem in this case in particular is complex filter. Complex as in lots of taps, i.e., uh, I -E, lots of taps, okay, coefficients. And at the same time, uh, uh, what else is there? Uh, stricter, stricter requirements, okay? So that's approach one. Approach two Multi-stage. So what we can do is, let's say we just design three shoddy-looking filters, right? So let's say they all look the same. Half-band filters. Boop, boop, boop. Right? And so what we do is we say, okay, signal, filter, down sample. Then same thing, filter, down sample. And then again, filter, down sample. Okay? Actually, think about it. This looks familiar, eh? Ah, oh, there's my Canadian accent. Oh, right. This is your course project, right? Your filter bank. In multiple stages, you're able to extract one eighth of the spectrum, and you don't have to design a very fancy one eighth of the spectrum like filter. You just have these QMF high pass, low pass filter combos, right? Boop, 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 boop. Because what you do is you take the original spectrum, let's say this guy here, filter him. So now you have the low, low frequency and the high frequency. Down sample. So now he's twice the bandwidth. Then what happens is you filter him again, okay? Down sample, and then filter him again, and then down sample, and you get, see, too much enthusiasm. You get the exact same 
signal at the end. So there's a trade-off, though. Like, you know, you have multiple stages, boop, 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 but you have simpler filter design. And uh, what happens is you save on complexity. It's lower order filters. Uh, you don't have crazy, you only need a, a, a down sampler of two, right, rather than a down sampler of eight. So what, at the end of the day, a lot of folks would employ approach two just because of its simplicity, right? So, so that's what the CNC example is over here, in the case of the th three stages that we've got. This guy, this guy, and this guy. And if you notice, they're all identical. So I could design one down sampler by eight and a filter combination, or I just have this cut and place template and create the same, um, same sort of response, but with very simple filter designs. So uh, as you can imagine, this thing can get very ugly. And you would be right. So like the, 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 the mathematics behind it, not so difficult, but you've got to keep track of stuff. And what stuff do you need to keep track of? You need to keep track of the overall interpolation, the, you know, the upsampling rate, and you need to keep track of the downsampling rate. And what, what is that equal to? It's both of them are equal to the product of the aggregate upsampling and downsampling rates, right? So if you wanted to know end to end, so let's say you have this multi-stage, this multi-stage um, configuration, right? There's an upsampler, upsampler, upsampler. What is the overall upsampling? Multiply them. Multiply I1, I2, all the way to IL in order to provide you with the answer saying this is how much upsampling is happening in this, right? And then you have these individual filters, so each stage, there's a filter in order to, uh, in order to work together with that sp specific uh, upsampler component. And then likewise, the downsampler, exact same thing, right? Notice also that you want to keep track of the frequency, right? So let's say you have some sort of sampling frequency here, fx. What is the new sampling frequency? So you have now I1 fx, I1 times I2 fx, and that cascades together. So what happens is if you have a, a multiple stages of upsamplers and filters, at the end of the day, your overall upsampler, upsampling rate, your interpolation rate, I, multiplied by your initial sampling rate, will give you the new sampling rate. And same thing with respect to the downsampling, except that in this case, what you do is you take the sampling rate and you divide it by D. And you divide it by D1. And then divide it by D1 times D2. And then all the way to divide by overall D. So let's, let's look at an example and study this more closely. Okay? So here's an example. And this is from your textbook, Proacus and Manolacus. And this is example 11.6.1. .1. Ah, it's an audio example. Yes. So the, so the question is, so each filter introduces some distortion, and the overall, at the end of the day, uh, you, you have a distorted output. And the answer is sure. Like, you know, if once you start using real filters and stuff, there will always be distortion added. How do you, so the question, I'm going to answer a question with a question. Um, so what would happen, like, you know, can you control how much distortion is introduced? And that, that's due to filter complexity. So it really is now a trade-off, depending on how much or how little distortion you want to introduce by the filter order. The only thing is, especially, like, let's say you want to, like, what, what I find, uh, let's say in practice, uh, and in general, what happens is if you want uh, a filter with a very strict set of requirements, it's got to be this narrow, oh, it's got to be this steep, a transition band, it's got to have this cutoff, this 3dB bandwidth and everything, and this much ripple, um, and you have to throw hundreds of taps at it, um, can you achieve the same thing 
by using several, let's say, less, um, uh, you know, smaller, like, you know, not smaller, simpler filters with less stringent requirements that are cascaded together. So you might have error propagating, but if you make those guys, you know, fairly decently, you'll win out. Like, you, maybe you have the same amount of distortion, maybe less, maybe more, but, but what you, you gain in turn is the complexity is going to be less, right? The other thing also is another co complexity uh, uh, aspect to all of this is using a single filter that's very simple and then cutting and pasting in multiple, uh, multiple times rather than using this one filter that you have to design p perhaps from scratch that has to have all these strict requirements. So again, let's say we go to the course project. So I want one eighth of the spectrum, right? So do you have to design a, a low pass filter with specifically this requirement? Oh, and then this first band pass filter with specifically this requirement. And then this band pass filter with specifically this requirement. Or can you just take out a low pass and high pass filter and cascade? So, so the answer is, like, you can make the filters introduce less distortion and, and really comes down to how much complexity are you willing to tolerate, right? Because think about this way. Also, if you're going, if you're taking only one eighth of the spectrum and you're just doing this in cascades of three, like, um, you know, again, and if you design your filters well enough, you shouldn't have too much of an issue. Okay? That's a good question. I, I mean, one thing to do is just try it out at home. Yeah. Like, you know, if you guys have no plans tonight, just run MATLAB. I do this all the time. I just, like, on my laptop in bed and, like, oh, okay, I'm going to run MATLAB. Okay. So, like, let, let's actually, let, let's try this out here, actually. Like, this example is going to be kind of cool. It will bring, bring this uh, concept together. So suppose you have, suppose you have an audio file. I don't know why we choose audio files. Um, and what happens is we want to do signal processing on a bandwidth of 4 kilohertz. And uh, what happens is it's been sampled at a rate of 8 kilohertz. Right? So what happens is we have an audio file. It's sampled at 4. Um, it has a bandwidth of, uh, sorry, sampled at 8 kilohertz has a bandwidth of 4, so we know that Nyquist, there should not be any aliasing, right? And then what happens is we're interested only in a frequency uh, below 80 hertz. So really, you know, like, you, like for instance, like human speech, what's at that, that, that range, right? Like maybe baritone. No, just kidding. Maybe not. But what happens is we're really interested in 80 hertz. Suppose, for instance, what operates below 80 hertz that maybe you pick up on a microphone? Yeah. So what happens is maybe there's, like for instance, like, w like what frequency does electricity, what, what, what's it at? Like, you know, 60 hertz, right? What's kind of interesting is I remember that, that lesson stuck with me when I was like a freshman, I was in a circuits lab, and then one of my TAs like saying, oh, let me try something. And then he took out this wire and uh, plugged into the oscope, and he was trying to see if he can pick up some of the uh, signal from the, the lights and stuff like that. So I, I think we were, like, you know, and then he asked me, and he put me on the spot, and then I don't think I got the question. I got marked wrong. So anyways, so what happens is maybe there's something there at 80 hertz that the, uh, the individual wants to, to study. So what you, want, what you would like to do, so 80 hertz out of essentially a band of 4 kilohertz, that's really narrow, right? That's really narrow. And we want to explore that. We want to expand it. We want to study the entire band. So what do we want to do? So we have the constraints that the pass band region is actually from 0 to 75. So already that's pretty, pretty narrow. The transition band is only 5 hertz. And then uh, we have, uh, so what happens is that means our pass band frequency is up to f 75 hertz. Our stop band frequency is up to 80 hertz. And then the pass band region plus the transition band is 0 to 80. And what we want to do, we want to figure out, first of all, how much do we need to decimate by? Again, that sounds so negative. But how, how much, what should the decimation factor be? It turns out if you have 8,000, right, hertz, and uh, so that's fx. And uh, what happens is because of the Nyquist frequency, so we have a 2, 2 times fs, and that's the stop band, right? fs is the stop band, not sampling frequency. 
So the sampling frequency is fx. What ends up happening is it turns out that we will have a, con a d down sampling rate of 50. So what happens when we downsample by 50? Everything gets expanded spectrally by 50%. So we need, no, not 50%, 50 times. So we need to filter out a sliver, only 1 50th of that spectrum, the, low, the, most, the lowest low pass portion, and then downsample by 50 to expand it across the entire frequency range. That's serious stuff, right? So if you, if you want to design a filter with those sor sorts of specifications, you're going to require a lot of taps, a lot of coefficients in order to make a go of that. So what we want to do instead is can we create can we create a multi-stage solution that does decimation at multiple stages? So what are some natural numbers? Perhaps 5 and 10, right? We downsample by 5, we then downsample by 10. That might be 1, right? Or any combination of numbers, like downsamplers, that result in an overall end-to-end -end downsampling rate of 50. So, let's see. So first of all, so like this kind of answers the question about the complexity. So if we want to design a filter, and so let's figure it out. So let's say we take this expression here. So which, which filter design does this come from? What, what is this the expression for? Which filter? Does anyone remember? Is it? We're dealing with digital, right? Parks McClellan, maybe? OK, exercise for a student. What, like, if you were to design a filter, uh, what e expression is this? And remember, it has that oddball 14.6 delta F at the bottom. But what happens is, this is the closed form expression for determining the approximate filter order for using that particular filter design routine. So what ends up happening is, if you wanted to make a filter that only takes 1 50th of the spectrum at the lowest frequencies, um, and you have these specifications, you need 5,152 coefficients. Very, 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 yeah, yikes is an understatement. Now, let's say we do two stages, 25 and 2. If we do 25 and 2, um, and so let's say first stage is 25 and second stage is 2, what, what does it turn out? What would be the, fil what would be the new filter orders for stage 1 and stage 2, 167 and 222, uh, two, sorry, 220. Much better, right? So uh, to in total, we need 387 coefficients. We need a filter of 387 coefficients for stage 1 and stage 2, rather than 5,152 coefficients. Way better, okay? Punchline. Okay? So this is actually quite critical. This is why we do this conversion. So maybe we have that, those, in, so, so to answer the question again about uh, whether we bring in pyramids, well, if we stick to the specs, right, the passband and stop band ripples, um, the transition bands and all that, and, we, and then we calculate what is the necessary order, we still come out ahead by almost an order of magnitude of filter coefficients. Okay? So that's the punchline. And again, you might wonder, where the heck do we get those numbers? So I kind of gloss over it. So I wanted to get to the punchline so badly that I left out the details. The devil's always in the details. So the first one, let's say we look at the first stage. In the first stage, uh, we're downsampling by 25. Okay? So how do, let's specify the filter. And then what happens is we know that the, the new sampling rate will become 320. And then the second, second one is going to uh, be, uh, the second stage will be a downsampler of two. So what happens is we have the initial spec, again, of zero to 75. And then here, this is kind of interesting. We have a transition band that is 75 to 240. Where did the 80 go? And then... Like, I have this guy here, this delta F, that's 165 over 8,000, right? 
And then the stop band and pass band ripples that uh, we, we have one that's divided by two. So we split up the pass band ripple by two between transmit and receive. I mean, not transmit and receive, stage one and stage two. I'm talking comms, but that's bad. And then notice that stage two now sticks with that strict, that strict transition band that we talked about before. So where did we get this from? Where do we get 75 to 240 from? Okay, I hear silence. Hmm? Yep. So, well, 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 first of all, remember that this is not the last stage, right? So what happens is by specifying a very wide transition band, we keep the complexity really low on the part of the filter, right? So remember, the much more narrower and stricter the transition band, the more coefficients we're going to need. At this stage, we don't really care about having a very strict uh, transition band because we have another stage that will filter it for us. So that's, that's the trick, right? So notice that we have a somewhat complex first stage, but a very wide transition band. So we don't need that many co coefficients. And then stage two, we say, no, 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 no. This has got to be 80 hertz cutoff, right? So we're gonna, let's look at this. Like, where did that number come from? So first of all, the first guy comes from this. So we have a passband. So we know that, first of all, we need to respect the passband, which is, has to be 0 to 75, right? But the transition band, right, is from passband to uh, f of s, right? And f of s could be anything but it's got to be less than the initial sampling rate divided by 2d. That's, so so what, how does that look like? So what was the initial sampling rate of the input signal? 8,000, right? And then divide that by 2d. What's d? 25. And 2 times that, 50. So as long as we choose a stop band in the first stage, that is the sampling rate, 8,000 divided by 50, two times um, blah, 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 blah. The decimation rate of the first stage, we're good. We can go lower than that value, or, or we can reach that value. We, can, we should not exceed it because we'll have aliasing, right? So let me actually draw that. So what we want to do... Um, so, uh, so here's the overall filter response, overall. We want something that is, let's say, from 0 to pi. So I'm doing it in the omega domain. Sorry about that. It should be f. And we want something like that. We basically want pi over 50. And that's where the... That's where the no, no, let's, let's do it right. I'm sorry. Let's... Let's, let's keep it in F, otherwise people are going to get confused. I'm going to get, I'm going to get confused. <laughs> so what ends up happening, the spec is spec. So 8,000, right, hertz, 0, 75, 80. So we've got that, right? And then stop band ripple. Now, so what we want to do is we want to break this up into two stages. Stage one, and then stage two. So stage one, what we do is we specify the passband, again, is the same as before, which is, in this case, 75. But given that constraint, because remember, we're going to take this guy again, downsample by 2, so the spectrum spreads out anyway, and we've, uh, so first we've got to filter it, then downsample by 2, and we'll get the original spec. So what happens is we have 8,000 hertz, and then we have that limit, 
right? And that limit, so as long as our stop band, right, is less than or equal to 8,000, two, uh, 2 times 25, so that's 50. So what is 8,000 divided by 50? 400? 460. So this guy is 460. So if our transition band fits like that, really awkward-like, right? And then you have your stop band. What happens is this translates, because of the loose or not so strict requirements on the filter itself, we can keep it. This will result in low filter order. And that makes me happy. OK? And then the second step is now you, you do employ Again, same filter, and you have 75, and now you have the 80, okay? But there's a little catch, right? So what's that catch? Aye. So the the the, the other, so that so that's the first stage. So the second stage, okay, is that you still have your passband up to FP, which is going to be 75. And now your transition band is different. Now your transition band is from FP to FI minus FS. So the stop band will be located between FI minus FS and, that's, and, and, and this uh, FI uh, over 2. So let's go back. So this guy here, so let's see where he is. So we have... 0 to 75, 75 to 80. And so you might wonder, OK, so what's this FI business? And so what happens is, let's look at this. So, so first stage, we got that. And we have no aliasing. And then the next stage, what happens is we want to choose now a stop band. And it still doesn't have to be super duper strict, right? So we can choose now. Uh, a new new design, so it's between that and what our our initial uh, blah, our initial uh, uh, stop band was. Okay, so this guy here is FS. So now we can choose a new frequency, so between that guy and and where we had the initial guy. So the 460. So we can choose now a new frequency between it and 460, and that will be our new. In this case, we just say 80. And that should be good enough. And then our stop band ranges from uh, that FI minus FS and FI divided by 2. Okay. So if we do that, we actually get that second stage over here. So in this case, we chose 80. And we have the second part of our stop band ripple and the other half of our pass band ripple. And using those specs, we have the second set of coefficients, 220. Yes? Mm -hmm. So in this case, actually the stop band should be, I mean, should be uh, FS should be smaller than 160. But here in example, they chose uh, 240. Where 240? Here. So this is that is. Here, eight, 80. Yeah, so, but, but I mean, th that, that was just, as long as it's below 460, it's okay. No, no, actually, not 460, Really? So, uh, 8,000 8, divided by? It's 160. Oh, okay. Now that's bad. Okay, that's actually good to know. So, that, then that's not right, because it should be... It, sh it should be based on, on this guy here, right? Oh, no. I messed up. Sorry about that. So, okay. No, 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 no. So what happens is this is the overall target. I've been looking at the wrong thing. Sorry. 
So what happens is, yeah, no, no. At every stage, um, what happens is you start off with that, like right, and then you break it up the transition bands until you get the overall transition band to be equal to that, which is 80. You're right. So, thank you. So this guy here, yeah, it didn't make sense. It's is it one, uh, so um, so if it's 50, it's 100, then it's 80. So that makes sense. So this guy is the overall stop band. You're right. Thank you. And so what we do is that at every stage we start off with say um, where is it? So in this case it's 240, right? And we progressively want to work our way down. So what happens is you have 240, and then you have th this additional range, and you s start selecting stop uh, stop band frequencies further and further in. So what you do is you start off with a big stop band, and then you get narrower and narrower until you reach 80, which should be the aggregate. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. And you have the constraints on what that fi should be. Okay. <sighs> so yeah, so if you use that fs, so in this case, suppose it's uh, 80, right? And then you uh, apply, apply this through, you can form now with the, so that way you don't have as strict the transition bands. Okay? Okay. All right. So what happens is if you now do this with bandpass signals, right, um, and they're confer, uh, confined to an integer band, what you can also do, and we saw this before. Remember when we were sampling at less than Nyquist and we basically have all the space in between, we get almost the same thing. Except that uh, what you might end up getting is uh, these periodic replicas that appear at DC and such, and you might want to filter those out as well. But uh, that, so that comes with, with the downsampling stage. So let's say if you have uh, a signal and it's confined to some sort of um, integer band, in this case here, uh, which is defined in this case by 2 pi over D to 3 pi over D, and then you downsample, um, b b what you'll end up getting um, are like, you know, the, these copies all over the place. And then you can actually filter out the spectrum of interest. So let's say you can have something at the low, path, uh, low frequencies. More information about this, of course, can be found from section 11.8, 11.9.1 to 11.9.3. Okay. So, so actually, that, that, that's something I think I'm going to try and look at a little bit more. I'll explain it to class, I think. Uh, let me, let me uh, mull over this and, and see how to present this better. I think with respect to defining the stop band frequency, um, the, the key here is not to define a strict one right away, but have several of them that aggregate to form the strict one in a cascaded manner. Because if you don't, you actually lose the advantage of the low filter order. Just the aggregate does, right? So, so as long as the cascade of all these uh, filters produce an aggregate, the overall stop band is equal to 80, you're fine. And so what happens is, let's say one, so, so think about, so let's say we do that in this case. So what is it? So in this case, we're, we're doing downsampling, right? So ultimately what we want to do is we want to have spectrum that at the end of, let's say, this two stage, uh, the stop band is at 80. So the first one's 25, right? Out, uh, instead of downsampling by 50, we have downsampling by 25. So in that case, we have spectrum, right? And, and what ends up happening is, so OK, we, we downsample by 25, so everything spreads out by 25. So what we want to do, first of all, is we want to filter. Yeah, so that filter doesn't have to be too strict, because then we have another filter. In this case, it's going to be a half-band filter. We can cut out the excess that the other filter did not get, and we can make that a little bit stricter. Okay, So that, that's, that's what's happening. Now, as for the mathematics, I'll, I'll think about a better way of presenting it than, than here. Okay. All right, so that concludes um, lecture 27. Okay, so what we're going to do 
is we're going to take a 10-minute break. So we'll start at 